Now, one city, historically a centre of the slave trade in the United Kingdom, also the hometown to a wealth of internationally renowned artists, Damien Hertz, Banksy, Portishead, Tricky and Massive Attack. Bristol is a cosmopolitan port that unites a unique array of cultures. It has a geographical makeup that ensures those cultures do mix. And it is the setting of a new book out in English entitled Massive Attack, Out of the Comfort Zone by Melissa Shamam, who comes to give us her perspective on that cultural mix uh, Melissa, welcome to the show. Firstly, can I start by asking you, what brought you to Bristol and this topic? Well, yeah, it's a bit of a weird story. So I, I used to live in the UK and before then I lived in Miami. So I was writing about the Caribbean pretty much. And then I went to live in Africa because I'm a journalist and I was working with the BBC. So that's all the link, obviously, the, the British Empire. And when I was back in Europe after spending time in Central Africa four years ago, even more than that, um, I have always been writing between politics and music and this very same band Massive Attack they traveled to Lebanon uh, in the summer 2014 for just a couple of gigs and then they were at La Fête de l'Humanité in, in Paris and they were really they went there was an article in Independent they went to a refugee camp because they've always been working with Palestinian refugees especially in Lebanon as you know like at least a quarter of the population living in the territory are refugees from, from Palestine and now Syria and there was just those very genuine photos of them in the camps with young people and they helped building a studio for them and that really resonated with me because I've always loved their music I've always loved British music because it's much more international and then you know there's a weird story about them starting as a collective very young one of them was a street artist and they were all from a mixed background so I was thinking there's so much to tell about you know how Bristol shaped the music and I guess I just wanted another trip (laughs) and and indeed, it was uniting all your worlds. So, well, your book, as you say, is predominantly, of course, about massive attack. They are currently in Paris uh, for part of their 20th anniversary tour of their third album, perhaps the book most popular, Mezzanine. Um, however, this tour also examines current uh, social and political issues. Absolutely. So it's very bizarre somehow because the band started in an underground scenes with no money and they were just talking about their everyday lives as DJs. But 20 years on, they became extremely political. Mainly in 2003, something really changed our life. That was that one of the band members was really against the war in Iraq. So he demonstrated in what was one of the biggest demonstrations in the UK uh, in September 2002. And then later on 2003 but even before then when they were writing mezzanine there was a lot of changes in the in the united kingdom the new labor came into power and there was a lot of promises at the time on how it would reshape the country and it did in a way but when you come from like a different background it's not so central not so london very much mixed then you you could see you know that it was also like selling the culture to to, to market it and just you know having this cool britannia kind of tag on everything and obviously the band was like shying away from this and that album Mezzanine was really uh, digging into the dark side of their own culture so they really started to address politics on stage in a way that very few musicians have done like quoting political slogans or showing pictures from the news and the show that they're currently touring is quite disturbing in that way you have like footage that you wouldn't even show on television like you know the editor would be telling you too much blood for this and then here you have it on Le Zenit. Yeah quite a a unique and and, uh, almost aggressive one perhaps for for some of the audience viewers but you mentioned there their diverse culture tell us a bit more about that because it does sound reading your book that Bristol is a pretty unique when it comes to that mix of different influences. Yes and it, it goes back away in their history so Bristol was became in the 18th century this kind of link between London and the Americas, the Caribbean and North America specifically, because it was like a, one of the biggest ports. It was actually richer than Liverpool at some point. And then came the train, so it was like the, the shortest way to go and colonise North America. So obviously that had a huge impact on back home. Like a lot of people came back from there and they had been on boats going to Africa to go to the Caribbean. And then with the two great wars, there was an influx of migrants coming from from the Caribbean specifically. So there's a part of Bristol that is like very, very Jamaican. It's called Simples. And from the very, say, 20s, 30s, and then 40s, you had a lot of families from specifically Jamaica, but obviously other Caribbean islands. And they brought them their own culture. But weirdly enough, in Bristol, there was this kind of hot spot, and it really 
bloomed and then became quite important. So it was the home for blues parties and then reggae came over. So a lot of people of that age in the 80s would discover like music from New York or Jamaica before London, just simply because they had a cousin and they would just, you know, talk about it or have someone visiting from from the, from the area. So you, you had this rich, rich diversity, and as you say, influences accessible to people there. But one thing that comes out in your book is, while that might credit uh, a lot of the music and indeed a lot of massive attacks diversity, and they seem very open, both politically, socially, to the outside world, yet they don't seem to really like to be out in the outside world. It seems like they need this bubble of Bristol. Yeah, so it's it's a bit strange because a lot of artists would just leave their hometowns why they, when they become famous, right? And they were pushed to move to London, especially because Bristol is very close to London. So that's why the, the city didn't have a music scene for a long time, just because all the jazz scene from the 60s, they would just go to London to become someone. And Massive Attack refused to leave Bristol, but on the other side, they started quite... After 10 years of heavy promo, because you had to exist on television especially, it was like, you know, MT. TV, it was, it was the time when music would exist through music video, they started shying away from the press. So what's the best way when you were out and about in a big party with Damon Albarn and Kate Moss that just go back to your little suburb outside Bristol in your country house or in Cornwall and disappear for two years without, I think Porty said was even bigger at doing this. I think the, the, late, the lead singer, she only gave maybe five interviews in 20 years. They, it's maybe a sense of protection for that uh, protection constant is, pressure. Yeah, protection is actually the name of their second album, so that's yeah, very relevant. <laughs> very yeah, cool. it's the thing that you can... If you don't protect yourself, you will become a slave to the system. You become a, a product to market. And Which so is then, clearly something they've constantly rallied against. But very briefly, Melissa, because we're running out of time, we've talked about the diversity of culture, but also the diversity of different artwork. And, of course, Bristol, also home to Banksy. Um, and according to your book, uh, Massive Attack are not... Banksy, but they did inspire. The That's artist. it. One of the member was a very uh, early graffiti artist in the early 80s, and uh, Banksy's uh, uh, approximately 10 years younger than him. So he saw his first exhibition, and then he was he said himself he was very um, inspired by him. But they're totally two different people. There's many examples that can show that. I know that the rumors always uh, win because you can't like show that something is not true, but it's just a fact that they've, they've worked together, but they are two different and people. And Bristol, also really the heart of uh, graffiti in the UK, Definitely the first still. exhibition, I believe, in Europe held in Exactly, Bristol. in 85, and now they have one of the biggest festivals in July called Upfest every year, uh, where graffiti artists from all over the world come over, and actually without Banksy being involved at all. It's just new artists are quite taking so over. So having lived in other parts of the UK, do you still see Bristol as this unique cultural... Yes, it's very interesting because we we talked about the Caribbean, but there's a lot of migrants from a, a lot of other places. There's a huge Somali community. There's still Italian and Irish people, and there are a lot of Spanish people. It's it's a great hub. Actually, it was named by the UNESCO one of the greatest city in the UK for cinema now. So it's been building up from from an art to another, and it's a very friendly place, very green, very open, very diverse. It's quite cool. You're painting quite a nice picture of it, I have to say, Melissa Shamam. Thanks so much for coming in and giving us your perspective on the role history and culture can play in the art that develops.